This course is intended for managers. One of the most important aspects of workforce management is capturing when and where employees work. Dayforce tracks this information using timesheets. It is the manager's job to review the timesheets for their employees and location for accuracy. This is a critical task because this information is later used to calculate the employee's pay. This course explains how managers use the timesheet to view, edit, and approve employees' timesheets, detect and correct errors, and ultimately authorize timesheets and approve pay. The following sections are included in this course. Timesheet Overview, where we identify the task manager complete using the timesheet feature, explain how so how to load the timesheet and change the display options, and illustrates the timesheet management process. Review the timesheet, explains how to identify potential problems on the timesheet. Key tasks include reviewing the problem panel, filter panel, and the pay panel. Resolve timesheet problems, explains how to correct problems identified on the timesheet. Key tasks include editing punches, adding a pay adjustment, and adding shift transfers. Authorize and approve time, explains how to add final changes to the timesheet, authorize the timesheet data, and approve timesheets and associated pay information for the pay period. Retroactive adjustment, explains the process for making retroactive adjustments to timesheets. Timesheet Reports explain commonly used timesheet reports. Certain day force courses are required as prerequisites prior to attending this course. The following courses will provide the fundamental knowledge you need to understand the key day force features discussed in the present course. Understanding how an employee uses day force, this course explains how employees navigate view and update personal information and complete common work tasks in Dayforce. Understanding how a manager uses Dayforce explains how managers navigate, view employee information, and access manager features such as schedules and timesheet. There's also a variety of supporting guides available through the support at support.ceridian.com. Talk to your organization's support user or implementation consultant for help in obtaining these guides, depending on if you are in implementation or live. The course mentioned here, Manager Guide, is available in the support portal, in Knowledge Base, Reference Materials, Admin and User Guides. Let's look at the Timesheets Overview. Dayforce tracks employee time and attendance using timesheets. These are records that summarize when and where an employee worked. They compare his or her work time to scheduled time and can be used to detect and correct time exceptions and abnormalities. It is the manager's job to monitor the timesheet for their employee and locations to ensure that the time and attendance information is accurate. This is important because this information is used to calculate the employee's pay. As a manager, you will use the timesheet features to monitor attendance, add or edit time and correct problems, add pay adjustments, view pay information, authorize time, and run timesheet reports. Timesheets is where all timesheet data is recorded. Timesheets are organized by location and date. Let's go to day force to load the appropriate timesheet. To load your timesheet, you can use the icon from your favorite bar or go to the menu bar and click on timesheet. Depending on your configuration, the timesheet may automatically load to the current week for the selected location and manager. If not, 
Click on the blue triangle beside the load button to select the location you want to load the timesheet for. You can access the different location by clicking on the icon of your location. They would be all listed here. You choose which location and then click the OK button. You can filter the timesheet to only show employees the user has access to by clicking the manager button and click the manager name from the list. For this example, we want to view the entire store's timesheet, so we will leave the manager blank. So let's remove island. Once you have chosen your location and your manager, you click on the load button. Once loaded, the timesheet lists employees against the days of the week in a grid. Each cell represents a single time and attendance record for a specific employee and date. The employee's work times and positions are recorded within each cell. They first sums the shift's hour and the total weekly or pay period hours in the total column on the right of the timesheets unless there is a problem with the shifts detail that prevents the application from adding up the hours. Two columns display in each cell beneath the position. The left column lists the schedule time or when an employee is supposed to work based on their schedule. This column can only be edited in schedules. The right column lists the actual time, which records the time that is used to calculate the employee's pay. Actual time can be added, removed, and modified in timesheets. The way the information displays in the timesheet depends on how Dayforce is configured to capture employee time. There are three ways to capture the time in Dayforce. Clock punches. The manager schedules the employee's hour and the employee punches in and out of each shift using a clock. Typically, employees who punch in and out are paid hourly based on their punch time, not their shift time. Then time entry. The employee or manager enters times manually into a timesheet. Once he or she accesses the timesheet, they enter the start and end time on a daily or weekly basis. The timesheet displays the hours the employees entered in day force. And auto pay. They force pays employees a fixed amount based on the employee's hourly or salary rate. This method does not display regular hours within the timesheet, but displays pay adjustment such as vacation or sick time. Time entry and auto pay are most often used for employees who received salary based pay, meaning they are paid a fixed amount not dependent on punch information. This course is focused on clock punches to cover the key steps involved in timesheet management. When viewing the timesheet, the actual time displayed can be the raw punch time, plus or minus adjustments for rules your organization has defined for treatments of punches. For example, there may be a rounding rule in place that changes any punch entered within five minutes of the start or end of the shift and displays it as a punch entered right at the scheduled shift start or end time. These rules are referred to as punch policies. Or the time that was entered directly into the timesheet. It is important to understand the difference between raw punch time and actual time in the context of the timesheet. Raw punch time is the exact time an employee punched in for work as recorded by the clock. Actual time, the punch time displayed on the timesheet. They force takes the raw punch applies the punch policy rules and displays the rule adjusted time. This is the time record they force payroll uses to calculate employees pay. The punches entered by an employee serve as a record for when the employee worked, how long as they worked for and what they were doing at work. This information is used to calculate employees pay. However, the actual time displayed on the timesheet is not always equal to paid time. 
Additional rules can be configured to classify time as being paid or unpaid. As an example, an employee may punch in 30 minutes early for a shift, but the time that was recorded as being early can be calculated as unpaid time. After loading a timesheet, you can switch between three levels of display details. Adjust the level of detail slider bar to the desired level. The three levels of details are high, that would display both the scheduled and actual times for an employee. It includes shift start and time and meal start and times. Medium displays the actual time the employees punched in and out and their actual meal times. And low displays the actual time the employee punched in and out. The timesheet displays two types of icons within each cell, status icons and details icons. The status icon defines the status of the shift, such as whether the shift showed as worked, not worked, or scheduled in the future. The details icon represents the segment of time for the employee's shift. The blue arrow is the start of the shift. The knife and fork corresponding time represents a meal, blue mug corresponding time represents a break, and the blue square is the shift and time. As you edit and adjust the timesheet, the application displays additional icons to detail the type of edits made. Blue arrows represents a job transfer office buildings, shift work, or schedule in a different location, the clock, pay adjustments was recorded in hours, number one, pay adjustment was recorded in dollars, and the stamp, you or another manager authorized the time in attendance records on the shift. Now let's go back to day force to learn how to read the timesheet and modify the timesheet display options. So in our timesheet, we can see the different cells that represent a shift for an employee. Here you can see the shift for Ida Barnes on Tuesday, March 23rd. You can also see the status icon on the left side of your position that represents exactly the status of your shift. So here in the green dot represents a work shift as scheduled. When we look at the green dot with the white arrow, the employee has punched in for her shift as scheduled, but it doesn't give you a full green button because the employee did not clock out. You can see the red one that means that the employee did not work a scheduled shift, also called a no-show. So those status icon will be represented on the left-hand side of the employee's position. You also have the detail icon that are giving you the information regarding a shift, the start time of a shift, the meal start and end time, and also the end of your shift. You have the possibility of seeing also additional icons that would be represented on the top right corner of your screen. Those additional icons could be two arrows that are telling you that the employee had a transfer in the middle of a shift. You could have also the icon of the office buildings that tells you that the shifts work or scheduled in a different location. You could have also a little brown stamp that means that the shift was authorized. We also have the options in the toolbar. In the option, this is where you would choose the level of detail that you want to see on your timesheet from high to medium to low. You could also change the way you want your position to be displayed, either department name and job or simply job name. And also the general options. There are five general options in the timesheet. Auto load on start loads the schedule without having to click on the load button. 
show problem pane after timesheets are loaded automatically opens the problem pane when the timesheet is loaded. View totals in hours minutes. Display the total hours in hours minute format. Enable real-time calculation automatically recalculates displayed data as you make changes to the timesheet. And indicate shared employees. Would display the shared employees icon next to the employee who are working at the selected location as their secondary work assignment. So let's close now the options. There are four key steps in the timesheet management process. Review the timesheet. You want to review the timesheet and identify any problems that require resolution. Resolve timesheet problems. Any problems that have been identified require a resolution. Depending on the problem, the resolution may vary. Authorize time. Add final changes to the timesheet and authorize timesheet data. And approve timesheet by pay period. Approve the timesheets and associated pay information for the pay period. This information is used to calculate the employee's paycheck. Sometimes mistakes happen and managers need to correct an employee's timesheet after time and pay has been approved and used to pay the employee. In that case, retroactive adjustments are used to make corrections to past information. Managers must review timesheets regularly to ensure their accuracy and detect any problems. The punch policy is a set of rules and process validations that act as guidelines for recording time on clocks. Punch policies are configured according to the time and attendance policies of your organization. When employees punch in, they first compare the punch data to the scheduled shift and punch policy to determine if the action has caused any problems. For example, an employee who forgot to punch out or an employee punching in late causes the force to detect a problem that a manager must correct. If your organization requires it, punch policies can also include rounding rules. For example, if an employee punches at 7.59 a.m., rounding rules display the punch time as 8 a.m. How to find and define the problems? A symbol on the timesheet indicates that there is a problem, but these may be difficult to locate if viewing an extensive timesheet. There are three panels that can assist you in locating problems on the timesheet. The Problems panel displays errors, warnings, and informational messages about the timesheet. The Filter filters the timesheet to display employees with shifts that meet specific criteria and pay displays pay information for a specific employee. When there are discrepancies on an employee's time and attendance records, the application displays one of the following icon that represents the problem severity. Error, it is a critical problem that must be corrected. Warning, it is something that might be useful to know about but only sometimes require correction. And information, it is useful to know about, but do not need any correction. Let's go in day force to find and define the problems on the timesheet. We're going to look at the problems panel, the filter panel, and the pay panel. Let's go to the problems panel. The Problems panel makes it easy to quickly identify problems on the timesheet based on severity. A list of errors, warnings, and information messages currently found on the timesheet displays, along with the employee affected, and a brief description. You can filter the list of results by selecting or deselecting the icons on the left-hand side of the panel. If you want to see only the errors, you can deselect warning and information. You want to see only the warnings, you can deselect errors and look at the warnings. And if you want to see only the information, you can deselect 
warnings to look at the information. You can look at all three of them by selecting the three icons. You can highlight an item on the list to immediately jump to the timesheet cell with the issue. We can see now they force highlighted the cell for Ida Barn. It is important to note that the problems panel only detects problems that return an error, warning, or information message. When an employee does not punch in at all for a shift, the problems panel does not have punches to compare to the schedule. Therefore, no show shifts do not display in the problems panel. To identify no show shifts, you should use the filter panel. Now let's talk about the filters. So let's close the problems panel and go to the filter. The filter panel is used to detect specific scenarios on the timesheet. You can use it to find problems as well as other issues that don't produce problems such as the no-show shifts. Along with the standard filter options like detail and status, timesheet specific filter option including rotation, job and problem type are also available. You need to select the parameter you wish to filter by to display the record for affected employees. If you want to look at the no-show, you can go and click on the schedule not worked and you could apply your filter. It is recommended to highlight before you apply the filter to make sure that only the shifts that are filtered would be showing. So I will apply my filter. So now I only have my no-show shift. If I want to go back, I go back to my filter. I can remove the highlight and I can clear the filters and apply again. But I'm going to show you something that you should take into consideration. When you use the filter, you should save your filter in your favorites. So I'm not filtering on anything. None of those items are filtered by. So what I could do is go to my favorites and save that filter as a favorite. I could call it default timesheet and save it. So then after I create other filters, whenever I want to come back to my default timesheet, I could go back to my favorite and come back to my default timesheet. Now let's go and create another filter. I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to filter on my schedule not work. I will highlight and I will apply my filter and save again that filter as, and this time I will put here no show. And I will save. Once I do that, it's easy for me to come back to my regular timesheet with no filters or to come back to the no show filter. It is important to note that you should always clear the filter parameters before choosing different options to ensure the parameters from your previous search are not included in your new filter. Time and attendance data on the timesheet is associated with a series of pay codes. These pay codes describe what an employee was doing for a segment of time. Each pay code is linked to a pay category which determines how the employee is paid for each of those segments of time. The pay panel associates the appropriate pay code and categories with time data on the timesheet. You can use it to view the summary of an employee's pay for each week. So you can select one employee, go to the pay panel. The pay summary has two main tabs, weekly and daily. The third tab, Retro, will be discussed later. So the weekly tab displays pay details for each day the selected employee worked during the selected week. The following information is shown for each day. The date, the employee's location and position, number of hours worked per day categorized by pay category, total amount the employee will be paid for the hours recorded that day. The Daily tab displays pay detail for the selected employee and day highlighted. So let's highlight a day for Ida Barnes. 
This view display a breakdown of the segments of time represented on the timesheet and the pay code associated with each segment. You will see the following information. Start and end time and date for the time segment associated with that pay code. The employee's work location and position information. The pay code associated with a time segment. Pay category associated with the pay code. Rate information. Number of hours worked in that time segment and amount the employee will be paid for the hours work in that time segment. Once time and attendance data from the timesheet is approved, this pay information is used to calculate employees' paychecks. Therefore, it is important to preview employees' pay information prior to approving the timesheet to ensure each employee's pay is accurate. Reviewing the pay panel prior to approving the timesheet will help prevent the following situation. Employee hours are calculated incorrectly. Example, an employee forgot to punch in for a shift and therefore is or her pay is calculated with the wrong number of hours. Pay is categorized with the wrong pay code. Example, an employee should be receiving sick pay but instead receives regular pay. Or pay details do not reflect that the employee worked at the different location or position for a shift. As you resolve problems on the timesheet, check the pay panel to ensure that the time changes also results in the appropriate changes to pay information. Note that some configuration may not allow managers to view compensation details for their employees. In this case, the daily tab does not display and the pay amount is omitted from the employee's weekly tab. Once you have identified problems in the timesheet, you must resolve them. So let's go and resolve timesheet problems. This course covers how to deal with many timesheet issues, but does not cover all possibilities. The errors you see and the corrections you need to make will depend on your configuration. Let's go to day force to resolve timesheet problems to add missing punches, remove on work shifts, and correct early or late punches. So let's go and close the pay panel and open the problem panel and resolve the problems that we see. Let's first go to Ida Barnes. Employee occasionally forget to punch in or out for their shift. Manager must correct the timesheet when it occurs to eliminate the error. There's different ways of doing that. You can go to the shift in the add new shift, you could go to the down arrow and add a new punch. So we could choose either a shift start mill start mill end or shift end. We would use the shift end and we would use 5 p.m. for the end of the shift. And click OK. We corrected the problem for Ida Barnes on Wednesday. Let's undo this. We could also use the edit shift by going to the little pencil, clicking on Edit Shift Time. And in the Edit Shift Time, the Edit Shift Time window will display. And you will see a green check mark on the shift that is necessary to correct. If there are no meal punches, you would need to click on the little plus sign with the little utensils. So here we need to accept the out punch at 5 p.m. or confirm the time. So I click on the green check mark to confirm the time. And I click OK. We corrected the shift for Ida Barnes. Now let's go to Frank Sykes. If an employee punches in on a day where no shift is scheduled, the punch displays on the timesheet as a problem punch. The manager must remove the punch from the timesheet to correct the problem. So to remove the punch by clicking on the line where we see the information for Frank Sykes, we can go and delete the punch. Now let's look at Quinn Cayman. The punch policy can be configured to detect when employees punch in late or punch out early. When this occurs, a warning is generated and the employee's pay is adjusted based on their recorded time worked. The warning also displays on the employee's attendance records. If a manager wishes to excuse the employee, corrections must be made to the timesheet.
Many organizations configure a grace period and resolution codes as part of their punch policy. Both items are important in understanding how warnings are generated for punches. Grace period. This is a window, usually within 5 to 10 minutes of the scheduled start or end time, where early or late punches are permitted and a warning is not generated. Resolution codes. These are configured responses used to deal with late or early punches. For example, a late in OK resolution code excuses the late punch from the attendance record and the employee is paid for the missed time. Resolution codes are configurable. In this example here, Quinn Cayman shifts began at 1 p.m., but she punched in at 1.15. As a result, a warning is generated for the late start time based on the policy configured. The timesheet may be authorized with a warning on it, but the late start is added to the employee's attendance record and their hours worked are adjusted. The edit shift time window will display. The exception code punched in more than five minutes late display beside the shift start time. If the employee simply arrived late for their shift unexcused, we would leave this exception code on the timesheet to track the late arrival on his or her attendance record and adjust the employee's pay. If the employee did arrive late but the late arrival was excused, for example, he or she let you know in advance, you can resolve the exception by clicking on the down arrow and choosing the resolution code. In our case here would be late in OK. The late arrival is removed from the employee's attendance record and the employee will be paid for the time missed. To resolve multiple warnings quickly, you can click on the menu beside the edit shift time and use resolve all exception. The applicable resolution codes are applied to all exception punches. Again, the exceptions are removed from the employee's attendance record and the employee is paid for the time missed. You could also adjust the time for your employee. If the manager knows that the employee worked the whole shift but punched at the wrong time, the actual start time can be adjusted by going to the edit shift and adjust the start time here. We could adjust it to 1p and click OK. The employee's time worked is now in line with what it should be according to the schedule. The edit icon display in the bottom right corner to indicate that it was edited by the manager. If an employee doesn't punch in and or punch out for the shift, the shift displays with a schedule not work status on the timesheet. It's as if the employee did not show up for work. If you know that the employee did in fact work that shift, punches can be added by the manager to ensure the employee is paid. Let's go in day force to look at our no-show. We can filter to see our no-show. Let's close our problems panel. We could go to the filter and filter to see our schedule not work or go to our favorite. Since we have created a filter to see our no-show, use the filter created. We could also use when we click on the filter highlight and apply to highlight only the shift that are no show. The rest of the timesheet is grayed out. So we have our employee, Jerry Yaklin, that uh, has a no show for Tuesday. So let's click on Jerry's shift. If an employee does not punch in and out for the shift, the shift displays with a schedule not work status on the timesheet. If you know that the employee did in fact work that shift, punches can be added by the manager to ensure the employee is paid. When all punches are missing from this timesheet cell, only the add to schedule icon will be available. So you can add shift to schedule that would add the employees to the scheduled hours automatically. Or you could add new shift that would add the new shift independent of the scheduled hours or add a new pay adjustment to enter a pay adjustment. 
In our case, Jerry Eklund forgot his pass on Tuesday, so he could not punch in or out for his shift. So we can add shift to schedule. And by default, the application gives us the exact time in and out as per the schedule. We can click OK to accept the time. It is best practice to always put a comment when you add a shift to a schedule. So here we're going to put the comment, Jerry forgot his pass and was unable to punch in and out. And click OK. Pay adjustments allow managers and administrators to pay employees without adding punches to the timesheet. They can be used to account for employees' absences, such as vacation, sick time, or to pay additional premiums, such as training or special assignments. Some scenario that might occur, shift with no punches, no-show, an employee was sick and therefore had a no-show shift, shift with punches, the manager sends an employee to training and needs to note this on the timesheet, Punches without a scheduled shift, an employee is on vacation and is therefore not scheduled, but the manager needs to ensure that they are receiving vacation pay. And days with no scheduled shift, an employee is approved for paid time away from work. Depending on your configuration, pay adjustment may also be used for paying out bonuses, commissions, or premiums. You can pay an employee a lump sum, either in dollars or hours, to cover commission pay, quarterly bonuses, or vacation balance payouts. The way the adjustment displays on the timesheet depends on the type of shift it was added to. A no-show, the shift status is changed to schedule a not work with adjustment. The adjustment displays below the shift. Worked shift, the adjustment displays below the shift. The shift status is not changed. On scheduled day, the shift status is changed to scheduled not work with adjustments. The adjustment display below the shift. Let's go to day force to add a pay adjustment. While filtering for shifts that have not been worked, we notice that Eric Ellis does not have any punches on Tuesday. Eric called in sick on Tuesday. We will adjust his Tuesday shift to sick pay and add a comment that says Eric called in sick. So we see here the shift for Eric Ellis. No time was punched in, he was sick. But before I add a pay adjustment for sick time, let's go and verify if he's got enough time in his balance. So we will select Eric. We will go to the balances and we can verify here he's got 60 hours left for his sick bank. So I can close the balance and go in on Eric's shift, go in to add a new pay adjustment for sick, 7.5 hours. And as a comment, Eric called in sick. And click OK. We can go back to our favorite, go back to our default timesheet and save our timesheet. We can now see the sick pay adjustment for Eric Ellis. Sometimes plans change and an employee shift on the schedule doesn't match what they actually did while at work. Managers can modify the timesheet to accurately reflect a shift in this case. It could be an employee was scheduled for one position but worked another for the entire shift. An employee worked over lunch and should therefore be paid for the lunch break. An employee stayed late after punching out. Or an employee completed work other than his or her normal duties. Let's go to day force to make some corrections. On our timesheet, Bonita Eisenor has worked as a customer service cashier on Thursday, but it is reflected that she worked as a sales associate. Let's go and make the change for Bonita. So I'll go to the shift, click on the shift. There are three icons that will be showing. 
you can either add a new shift, therefore a new row would be added to the employee's timesheet with additional shifts, or you can edit the shift. You would be able to edit any field on the shift window, or you could delete the shift to remove the shift from the schedule. I click on edit shift. You can change the employee's location or the employee's position. You can override the pay code using the menu provided to indicate that the shift should be classified with a different pay code. In our case, we need to make the change for the position. So we will make sure that the customer service cashier has a second work assignment is in our HR record and is showing here. So we'll use customer service cashier and click OK. We can also add unscheduled time to the timesheet. We have our employee, Henry Leonardo, that has worked on Monday from 12 to 4 to help for a delivery. So employees may work extra hours that do not display on their schedule or timesheet. In this case, the manager can add extra punches to the timesheet on a day without a scheduled shift. Scenarios for that, you could have an employee picks up extra hours outside of his or her regularly scheduled shift, or an employee is called in to help on short notice. So in our case, for Henry Leonardo, let me just scroll down a bit. On Monday, I will add a new shift. The shift will be for store one as a customer service cashier. He did not work from nine to five. He worked from 12 to four. So I'm gonna change the start time to 12 P and the end time to four P. He has worked for hours. I can put a comment here. Henry helped with a delivery and click OK. The work not schedule yellow icon indicates that this shift was added to the employee's timesheet, but was not originally on the schedule. And I will save my timesheet. A shift transfer is used to manipulate the labor allocation within a shift. For example, if an employee has multiple work assignments in their HR record, they might work part of a shift in a position and then switch to another position for the second half of their shift. You can also record transfer to change the pay code for part of or the entire shift or assign dockets and projects. When would that occur? If an employee worked part of a shift at a position and part of a shift at another position, if an employee worked part of a shift at one location and part of a shift at another location, or if an employee took time out of a shift to attend training. Now let's go to day force to see how we do add a shift transfer. So Bonita Asenor usually works as a sales associate, but on Wednesday, she transferred to work as a customer service cashier at 7 p.m. So let's go in and add the transfer to her timesheet. I'll go to Bonita. I will go in and click on the shift. In the down arrow, I will add edit transfer. Now you can make changes to the location, the position, the pay code, the docket, the quantity, and you can add a comment. Let's add the transfer for Bonita. So let's click on add. We need to change our position from sales associate to customer service cashier. And again, that position has to be a second work assignment in our HR record. So here we change it to customer service cashier. The change happened at 7 p.m. So I need to go in the time and go and change the time. So here we'll change to 7 p. And we can put a comment, help on cash. And we click OK to confirm the transfer. Now on the shift for Bonita, if you click, you can see here on the top right corner, 
you see the little icon that is telling you that there was a transfer at 7 p.m. And we see the comment, help on cash. And I save my timesheet. Once the timesheets are completed and accurate, the manager authorizes the timesheet to verify the information. With some configurations, authorizations is required in order to approve the timesheet data for use in payroll features. When timesheet data is used in the Dayforce payroll module, even if the manager does not authorize the timesheets, by default, the timesheet will be approved and the pay will be processed. This is not a configurable feature. So now let's go to Dayforce to view timesheets audits and punches, authorize shifts, and approve timesheet by pay period. When the timesheet is saved, all changes made since the last save are applied and cannot be reversed using undo or redo. Additional changes need to be manually entered into the timesheet. If you go to the Audit panel for the timesheet and you choose one employee, if I choose here Bonita, the Audit panel shows what changes were made to the shift, who made the change, and the date and time at which the change was made. You can run also the Timesheet Audit report from the Reports menu to view a list of all changes made to the timesheet. Let's close the audits and let's talk about punches. If your organization is using rounding rules, it may be helpful to view raw punch times, that means the actual time at which the employee punched in prior to the application of the rule, before you finalize the timesheet. This information is found in the punches panel. You can run also the raw punch report from the report menu to view all raw and actual punch information for a location together. In our database, we do not have any raw punches because the employees do not punch in and out. So let's close the punches. And let's talk about authorizing the shifts. Authorizations indicates that you have reviewed the timesheet and verified that all the information is complete. This usually happens at the end of each week. To authorize a shift, you just have to select the desired shift. So let's authorize the shift for Henry Leonardo on Monday and click on the Authorize button. The Authorize icon display in the upper right corner of the shift. You can undo this action by clicking the Unauthorized. You would need to unauthorize before you save the changes. To authorize multiple shifts at the same time, you can use either authorizing all of an employee's record for the week by clicking on the employee's name. So I can authorize Eric Ellis for the whole week. Click on his name and authorize. You can see that icon for each and every shift. You can also authorize all the records for a specific day. So I could click on Tuesday and authorize all the shifts for Tuesday. You can also authorize a block of shift by clicking and holding the mouse button on the first shift. I can click here on either Barnes for Wednesday and drag until Saturday for also Eric Ellis and authorize. Or you can authorize a specific shift by clicking on the shift and authorize the shift. We will authorize our timesheet. So now our Monday is authorized. We only had one shift. Let's click on Wednesday to authorize all day Wednesday, all day Thursday, all day Friday, and all day Saturday. Once everything is authorized, you can save your timesheet. Now let's talk about approved timesheets by pay period. Based on the frequency that payroll processing occurs, a pay period is the number of days for which an employee is paid for each pay date. For example, XYZ company uses a weekly pay period for its retail employee. The company may process a weekly pay run for June 1st to 7, and this weekly date range is an example of one pay period. 
pay may be processed at different frequencies for different groups within an organization. Other groups may have pay processed on a bi-weekly, semi-monthly, or monthly period. At the end of the pay period, the manager is responsible for approving the finalized timesheets and associated pay data. This approval is how the manager certifies that the data is ready for payroll to use in pay calculations. If your organization is using the payroll module in day force, this approval by the manager indicates that the timesheet data can be used when employees' pay is calculated. If your organization is using another payroll application, this data is exported after approval. Regardless of the pay period length, timesheet data is recorded in a weekly format. Managers only need to approve the timesheet data at the end of each pay period. For example, XYZ Company has a weekly pay period for its retail employees, so managers must approve timesheets each week. Longer pay periods may require less frequent timesheet approval, for example, a manager approving timesheets for employees who are paid with a monthly pay period would approve all four timesheets once per month. Let's go to the pay approved checklist. The pay approved checklist is used to approve timesheets. It helps to organize the closeout process by listing the pay periods that are due or overdue for approval for your location. The pay approved checklist displays the status of each pay period, the start and end dates the pay period covers, the due date for the pay period approval, the number of problems within the pay period, and the number of unauthorized punches within the pay period. The following status icons would display on the pay approved checklist. Green check mark. The records for this pay period have already been approved. Orange clock, records for this pay period are due to be approved today. The red clock, records for this pay period are overdue. And the blue clock, records for this pay period are not due until some future dates. The exceptions columns will display an icon to indicate the type of issue with the timesheet. Errors, represented with the red circle and red X, displays the number of problems that exist on the timesheet for this location. The clock displays the number of active punches for this location. And the stamp, unauthorized, display the number of unauthorized record for the timesheet for this location. To resolve the issues, you can click on the organization's name in the checklist. Clicking this link will open the correct timesheet and display only the timesheet records that require fixing. Your changes can be saved. You can then close the window and return to the checklist. Check to make sure that nothing displays in the error and unauthorized columns. You won't be able to commit the pay if either of these columns carries a balance. You would then select the Approve checkbox to approve the timesheet for the pay period. The pay period is automatically locked when the period is approved. Click Save when finished. If your organization is not using the payroll module in Dayforce, there may be restrictions in place that prevent you from approving pay until all shifts on the timesheets have been authorized. Once a pay period has been locked and approved, the time and pay data is either used in the payroll module in Dayforce as part of the calculation to pay employees or exported to another payroll application. In some situations, a correction to the time and pay data on a timesheet may be required after a pay period has been processed. For example, an employee may have worked a five-hour shift on Saturday that wasn't recorded on his or her timesheet. As a result, the employee was not paid for those five hours. In this case, retroactive adjustment retros, are used to modify timesheet data after a pay period has been committed. 
Though payroll administrators could correct a pay discrepancy manually, it is important to correct any errors to the time and pay data on the timesheet itself. This ensures that the appropriate rules for overtime pay and premiums are still applied properly to an employee's pay. Correcting time-related errors in the timesheet also provides transparency as the corrections are visible to managers, employees, and administrators. When you get to a pay period that is already locked, the calculator icon will display on the timesheet next to the name of any employee for whom payroll has already been processed. There are three steps required to make retroactive adjustment to the time data for these employees. First, you need to unlock the pay period. Second, you have to add and review a retroactive adjustment and then lock the pay period again. Let's go to Dayforce to see how to work for retroactive adjustments. In order to enter a retroactive timesheet entry, the pay period must be unlocked by an administrator. It is up to the organization to decide whether payroll administrators enter the retroactive hours or whether it is the responsibility of the employee's manager. At XYZ Company, administrators must unlock the pay period and enter the retroactive hours. Let's go to Dayforce and log in as an administrator to unlock the timesheet. I am in Dayforce now as an administrator. I need to go and unlock the timesheet for the week of February 7th because we have Serena Tompkins, our employee, who usually works from Tuesdays to Saturdays, but she picked up a shift on Monday, February 8th that was never entered on her timesheet. So let's go and unlock that timesheet. I'm going to go to Pay Approved Checklist as an administrator. In the Pay Approved Checklist, I will filter to find my timesheet for the week of February 7th for Store 1. So I will filter, choose the date on my calendar to, for the week of February 7th and I will choose in my organization Retails Store 1 and apply my filter. I need to make sure that for the week of February 7th, I do unlock the timesheet, so I'm going to remove the check mark in the lock checkbox. I will save and refresh. My timesheet is now unlocked. Edits can be made to the timesheets once the associated pay period has been unlocked. Let's go back to Dayforce to enter the hours for our employee for the week of February 7th. So let's go and open our timesheet for the week of February 8th. We get the message that we would be in retro mode, previously transmitted pay period detected, any edits to this period will result in retro pay adjustment. I click OK. I can see also that all my employees were paid. I see that little calculator that says pay has been transmitted. Edits will create retro adjustment. Let's find Serena Tompkin. Serena's pay for that pay period has already been processed by the payroll administrator, but her manager did not indicate the extra shift that she worked on Monday, February 8th. For Serena to be paid for this shift, a retroactive adjustment must be added to the appropriate timesheet. Retro adjustments are added to the timesheet by adding or modifying shift details in the same manner as a change to an uncommitted timesheet or by entering a pay adjustment. These modifications can be made once the pay period has been unlocked. Before I add the extra shift, let's go and see the pay that she got for that week. So Serena, we can see that she was paid from Tuesday, February 9th to Saturday, February 13th. She got $843.75 for 37.5 hours. So let's now choose Monday to add the shift that she worked on Monday, February 8th. I will go and add a new shift. Serena worked from 12 to 4, 
12 p and she finished at 4 p.m. 4 p. We can see that it would be a shift of four hours. I will click OK. I will go on the shift, make sure that it is authorized. So I will click on the shift, authorize the shift, and save the information. Now let's look at the changes that happened for the employees for that week. Let's load the timesheet again. We still have the retro mode message. Click OK. If I go back to Serena and look at her pay, I can see now that she's paid for her four hours on Monday. If I scroll down, I can see that she's paid also until Saturday. But because we pay overtime after 40 hours a week, automatically the application calculated 1.5 hours of overtime for that week. I can look also for the day, click on daily. I can see that she's paid from 12 to 4. She worked, paid by the pay category regular at $22.50 an hour, 4 hours, $90. And I can also see the retro. We can see here that the application calculated that she had to be paid 2.5 hours of regular and 1.5 hours of overtime for the shift that we added and it would be paid as a retro. By default, any pay associated with retroactive adjustment is added to the employee's next regular paycheck. However, based on your organization's policy, in urgent situations, administrators may have the ability to process the pay before the next regular paycheck. It could be a good idea also to add a comment in the shift for Serena Tompkins. So here I'm going to just go and edit the shift. And here enter in which pay period that amount was paid. So I would say here retro paid pay period number 14. And I click OK and save the timesheet again. Now we have to make sure that we go back to approve the timesheet. So I'm going to go back to my pay approved checklist and I will go to my filter to find the week of February 7th, apply my filter and I will relock my timesheet, save and refresh. The Pay Delta report can be used to review any retroactive pay adjustments that have been made for a pay period. The report compares an employee's time and pay before and after the retroactive adjustments were made and then provides the delta by calculating the difference between them. For organizations in the USA, the retroactive adjustment described here should only be made within the current quarter. For assistance with cross-quarter adjustments, speak to your implementation or support team. Retro pay can also occur when an employee's rate of pay changes retroactively either from a change submitted on a position and compensation change form or a direct entry in people. In those situations, payroll administrators can use a sync pay changes feature for WFM retro pay changes to calculate any hours on the employee's timesheet that should be paid out at the new rate. Running timesheet reports is another way to efficiently identify problems on the timesheet. Here are some commonly used timesheet reports. Employee pay summary report displays a pay summary for multiple locations at once. Employee punch report plays a summary of employees' punches and work time. Includes also who punched in and out for work and when during the selected time period. Pay Delta report summarizes any retroactive pay adjustments that have been made for a pay period. Pay Summary report displays payroll data for each employee in wages and includes the number of hours employees work in each pay category. 
Punch Exception Report summarizes all exceptions on the timesheet for the selected period and groups them by zone, department, job, or employee. Raw Punch Report display raw punch data for employees when they actually punched in, as well as their actual punch time, the time that shows up on their timesheets when schedule rules are applied, schedule times, and exceptions. Timesheet Audit Report lists all changes made to time and attendance records. This is the end of our recording. Have a great day!